it's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham and Essex and the founder of the Tree of Life family, which is a growing network of growing churches around the UK. Why not check out our website, www.tree.church, and find out if we've got a church service near you. We'd love to see you. We'd love to have you with us. Awesome. We're talking about loving to have people with us. The number one requested person that people have asked to have back in the studio is Richard Waller, pastor of Tree of Life Guildford and Tree of Life Dorset. Richard, awesome to have you with us today. Great to and, be here. Uh, it's great to be here with Richard. And uh, it's Christmas time nearly. It's very nearly Christmas time. And so we want to spend uh, the, 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 this, uh, this, this program talking about the message of Christmas. What can we learn from the Christmas story? How can we benefit from it? So. Richard, I see you've got your iPad with you, so what's, um, what's, what's, what's well, occurring? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there are so many ways that you can begin a conversation about the, the Christmas story, as sure. it's called. Um, you know, it's called the Nativity. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I grew up in Britain, obviously, and we, we had the Nativity every year. In fact, I, I, I was Joseph once when I was very small. Um, and so it's just a real integral part, or used to be, of our culture in this. Yeah, I was the innkeeper one year. That was the only time I ever got in front of the stage. I had one line, I'm sorry there's no room. And that you still remember. <laughs> still remember it, yeah. <laughs> that you learned your lines Yes, well. very well. <laughs> um, so we've got this nativity story. Now, now um, as, as obviously we've, we've, we've learned, we've read in the Word, we've understood that, that the nativity story itself is a little bit left field of what what actually happened. And you can consider that to not be very important at all. In fact, I, I, I did find out that Nativity, the, the first Nativity um, uh, play, if you like, was uh, in the 1220 something or other, and it was written by St. Francis of Assisi. Oh, wow. Yeah, I discovered that myself. You see, every day's a school day at Tree of Life Church. And, um, and, and, and this story was to, was to inform everybody about, about the, the, the birth of Jesus, what actually happened on that day. But, but we know that that isn't actually quite what happened. And, and nativity itself, that word nativity, just means um, uh, the, the, the time of birth. So it's a, it's, a, it's a time that we're supposed to be looking at the, the birth of Jesus Christ. Because we know, again, subsequently, that the, the, uh, the, the wise men weren't there. When you read, read your, read your um, Gospels, when you read it, you find out that the, the Magi, the wise men, came when Jesus was a toddler, when he was about two, and they came to his house, and they brought all the gifts, etc., to his house. And when I found these things out, I was like, man, I've been lied to all these years. <laughs> it's just like when you watch a real-life crime drama and you think, I'm not sure that's exactly how it played out. Yeah, exactly, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so this nativity, this traditional nativity mm. scene that we see is, you know, and again, I, I'm not knocking it, I'm not saying there's anything really wrong with it, but if you look at, at, at the seriousness of the story, if you like, the, the truth behind the story is a powerful truth powerful truth and the world needs to know the truth I believe so uh, I, I know that when I've spoken to people and said well actually it, it went this way not that way and I've had people say well you're just being picky you're just splitting hairs but I think it is such an important story that we really need to know the truth and so uh, when you read it in in Matthew when you read it in Matthew 1 which I've got here I love how it starts it's Matthew 1 verse 18 um, I'm reading from the English Standard Version here because um, it bodes well with me. And uh, 18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place this way. I love that. <laughs> I love that, 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 that it's so clear. Mm. It took place this way. This is the way it happened. I love the fact that the Bible was so bold and, and, and brazen about what the truth is. 
And it says, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And then it goes on in verse 22, that all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. That's just such a beautiful precursor to the birth of Jesus in the, in, mm. in the, the nativity story. Let's call it the nativity, the Christmas story. And I love all of the individual little nuances that are in there. But when you, going beyond Joseph, going beyond, you know, the fact that, man, he had to believe. He, that, that's a man full of faith right there. And I believe that Joseph is skipped over quite a lot in, in, mm. in, in the church. Joseph is showing us right there what, what faith can produce. Because, man, I bet his mind was thinking, hang on a minute. My wife's pregnant and it's not by me. Yeah. You know, this is why you see it says that he was, he was looking to put her away, but still lovingly, still kindly. He was a good man. Um, That's this remarkable moment where he has this dream. In the middle of the night, he's asleep, has a dream. It's not an angel appears to him. Mary had an angel appear to her while she was wide awake. He has the angel appear to him in a dream mm. and say, take Mary, then a baby is born of the Holy Ghost. She's not, had, she's not, she's not been with another man. And um, I think that would be the morning I wake up and go, man, I should not have eaten that pizza last night. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't, there's, he, but he said, that's God. Something about that dream made him know that was God. He had that sensitivity of heart mm. to, to do what God wanted to do. Just amazing. Yeah, his heart was definitely right. Yeah. And he was obviously a, a man who, who, who feared God, who knew God. Um, I think if, and, and I also believe that that's, that's not the first time that he would have, he would have heard from God. Because mm. the first time is kind of like, is it, isn't it? But he knew, he was convicted, he knew that was God. He had no That's doubt at all. Yeah. It, went, it, went, it would go directly against the human nature. Yeah. You would have to know it was God with, without any doubt. This was a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it was going to affect his reputation. It might have affected his business, his finances. I yeah. mean, they're from a small town. Yeah. And they're, they're under Jewish law, so, you know, sex yeah. is for marriage, marriage is for life. And he's going to marry this woman and the baby's going to be born. They're going to go... <laughs> he's early, he doesn't look early, he looks like a big lad, you yeah, know, yeah, and there's yeah. going to be all that stuff going on, <laughs> and so he's going to be in the middle of all of that, yeah. and nothing to do with it in one sense, but people are going to think about him, they're going to think badly of him, they're going to think badly of the baby, they're going to think badly of her, and no, this is more important, doing what's right is more important than what other people think, Yeah, just remarkable. Yeah. And, the, and, and just, I, I, I see his love, because mm. that has to come from a heart yeah. of love, right, he loved, he loved her, he loved her. I mean, I also wonder if he knew the scripture. Well, the, that Lord, scripture. I wonder if he knew the scripture. That's, I was going to say that because it says spoken by the prophet. That is Isaiah. Yeah. It's Isaiah 7, 7, 7 14. 14. Yeah. So, so this was written 700 years yeah. before. Now, it's an amazing account. <clears throat> Isaiah 7 is amazing. Yeah. The king is Ahaz, and Ahaz is a wicked man, does not love God, hates God. And Isaiah, who's probably his cousin, if not his second cousin comes up to him and says, you are doing wrong, and God wants to prove he's real to you, and God's going to give you any sign you ask for. You ask for any miracle to prove God's real, and then God wants you to obey him that much. And he says, I'm not asking for nothing. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not falling for this. <laughs> and Isaiah says, fine, you don't want to fall for it? Here's the sign. A virgin's going to give birth and have a child. There's the sign, and that's going to mean God is with us. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I don't, you know. And then 700 years later, but I wonder if Joseph knew that. And then Mary's like, remember in the Bible, we read about that virgin that's going to have a baby one day. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just... Yeah. yeah. I, I believe, he, you know, we know that the, 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 the people of that time, they, they definitely knew their, knew their, um, knew their history. Yeah. They, knew, they knew their Torah for sure. Mm. Um, they, they, without a doubt, they must have known. Yeah. Well, so when the wise men known. appear and they ask, where's Jesus going to be born? Oh, Bethlehem. 
we know. Yeah. <laughs> and Joseph's like, hey, we're in Bethlehem. We're going to Bethlehem. Hold on. We've got to go, we've got to, go to Bethlehem for the census. And it's just, yeah, they yeah. must have... Yeah. I just start to realise they're living in the middle of Bible prophecies. And well, again, and the fact the angel said to him, Joseph, son of David, mm. he was reminded him of his lineage, yeah. rem reminding him that the Messiah is going to come through yeah. the lineage of David. And I, I, I believe that this was, you know, this is the Spirit of God doing exactly what the Spirit of God does these days, which is bring back to us a remembrance of all the things that have been said, that Jesus had said. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He's there to remind us, to, to comfort us by reminding us that it's already covered in the Word, right? I mean, that's where my comfort comes from, yeah. knowing that, that everything is already completed in the Spirit. As, um, yeah. uh, you know, we heard a message from, from Victor, Yes, and at the uh, men's conference. At the men's conference a while back, and that was just that's so powerful to know that you know uh, he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Everything he's seen, everything from the beginning to the end. That means in the spirit, everything is already completed mm. in the spirit. But we finish what's completed in the spirit in the flesh. That's what Jesus was. You know, he said that's what Jesus said. It's finished. Yeah. He, he accomplished what had to be accomplished in the flesh. To, to, to bring it all to, 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 to its conclusion, you know, which is powerful. And I'm sure that we could the theologically debate that, if I could say theologically, we could theologically debate these things all along. But I think when, you, when you're reminded of Scripture, when you're reminded of things, when someone says something, I've had a revelation on this and they say it to you, when it just sits well, mm. when there's no conflict in you and you think, man, that's, that's awesome. I believe that's what happened here. Yeah. No, I agree. We, we had a situation just recently where um, one of the ladies in our church, she had missed a Sunday morning. She was actually, her husband are involved in leadership there in one of our other locations. And um, I'd given a word of knowledge. And I said, there's somebody here with back pains and uh, some women issues and God's healing that right now. And, I, you know, and so she listened, I think four or five days later and got healed listening to the recording of yeah. the message. And I'm, I'm just overwhelmed by that. That really just, you know, overwhelmed me that would happen. And as I was praying about it, the Lord said, well, I, I've never done that. Mm. I said, what? And the Lord said, when I was here in my flesh, I never recorded a message as an MP3. Someone downloaded it, listened to it, and got healed listening to it. Amen. I said, that's true. He said, but didn't I tell you? You're going to do greater works. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm. We're, we're living in these Bible days. We're living in the Word of God. It's Absolutely. And I, I, I think that that's, that's a, a, a common... Um, phrase that Jesus said that a lot of people get a bit a bit confused about. Well, how can I do greater works than heal the sick, raise the dead, be raised from the dead? How can I do walking on water? How can I do greater works? And the simplicity of it is exactly that. We can, we can do a message right now. It, it can be broadcast all over the world. Yeah. Jesus couldn't do that. Yeah. That's, you're not going to do greater than the actual deeds. Yeah. But the, the works, the greater works, is doing those deeds on a bigger scale, which yeah. is exactly also, what we do now. You know, um, I mean, we, I got a text message just recently from someone who's watched the program and they, they couldn't walk properly, they could, couldn't run at all. And uh, I gave a word of knowledge during the TV program, they were completely healed. And they're running around their living room. Again, while that's happening, which again is through the TV in a different country, in a different, you know, even a different country, yeah. while that's happening, there's somebody on another Christian TV channel doing exactly the same thing. Mm. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. And meanwhile, there's in some local church somewhere, some pastor's praying for somebody and they're getting healed. In someone's living room, an elder's praying for somebody in a small group and they're getting healed. It's yeah. happening all over the world. Yeah. Well, Jesus was just one man in one place. Mm. You know, the Word had become flesh. But now Jesus is on every nation, every church. It's just wonderful. Amen. And that's yeah. what he said. That's why he said it's expedient for you that yeah. I go back to the Father. You know, we've it's fun today. Now we've gone from the birth of <laughs> yes, Jesus to, right the to, to, to the ascension of Jesus, right there and then. But, but uh, again, this this reminder that the angel gave him that this was this was written, this was this was what gave it weight. This is what gave it value. This is how he knew that it was actually for real through being reminded of what had already been written. Same way as Jesus did. Jesus, when he went to the, the synagogue and he sat down and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and he read from Isaiah and he said, and, you know, in, in your hearing today, this scripture has been fulfilled. And I love the way Jesus just deals with it. You know, we're talking about him being born, but he was the coolest dude ever. Mm. He was born just awesome. 
He was born the, the son, you know, fully God, fully man at that moment, when he was a little baby. When he was a little baby, he was, he was still the, 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 the son of God. He was still the, creating, the, the cre creator of everything yeah. as a little baby. You know, the Bible says that the, the, the worlds are framed by his, his mouth and yet his tiny little baby mouth couldn't say anything yeah. yet. And the, the whole manger he's in, the whole stable, the whole inn yeah. is being held together by the power of his words. Yeah, if there were animals <laughs> yeah. there, they were created by him. It's just, it's phenomenal. And this is why you can't, um, you can't, uh, you can't reduce um, the gospel into how you think it happened. It's because it's, it's not a natural thing, this is a supernatural thing. This is far beyond anything that our brains could actually comprehend. This is why at, at a time like Christmas, it's a time for us who believe to actually believe and stand by the fact that this is a virgin birth, you know, yeah. because again, this is what Isaiah had written. Yeah. It is written. Because it is written is one of the most powerful things in the Bible anyway. Well, someone t told me recently, they said, well, the, the word for virgin in Hebrew, it could mean a young woman. So Isaiah said, here's the sign from God, here's the miracle from God, a young woman's going to have a baby. She's, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. This, and, and again, this comes back to yeah. honouring the word. Yeah. Honouring the word as it is written. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, this translation could mean that and that translation could mean this. Listen, if the Bible says mm. that, that, that behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, mm. that's what's going to happen. If the Bible says that God created everything with, with his words, that's what happened. If the Bible says that, the, uh, that, that Jesus walked on water, that's what happened. If the, if the Bible says he was born of a virgin, that is what happened. It's what happened. It doesn't matter what you think about it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the world when says. When I first got saved and became a Christian, my mum was quite concerned at how fanatical I was about the <laughs> Word of God. So she got me this book and it was a, a, an attempt to explain away every miracle. Right. It was like the feeding of 5,000 was when that boy got his lunch out. Everyone else had been hiding their lunches. Then, oh, OK, I'll get mine out too. <laughs> we thought, well, if you're three days hungry and you're hiding your lunch, wouldn't you just get out and eat it anyway? <laughs> you know? yeah. And I was actually even in a Church of Scotland once. I'm not knocking the Church of Scotland, but I was at the Church of Scotland service um, when I was up there. And um, this guy was talking and he, sa he said the same thing about how when the boy produced his lunch, everyone else's heart was hurt and they brought their lunches out and they all shared, you know. And he said, they probably brought all their ham sandwiches out. And I thought, well, all the Jews <laughs> eat ham sandwiches. I'm just laughing. You, you find something funny about it. I said, the Jews having ham sandwiches and eating them. Yeah, just, it's, it's, just, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, I, I saw a similar thing. Now, you know, and I'm not getting off topic here. I'm still s s staying on topic. But I, I'd watched one of these... Um, at these these channels. This is this is this is a few years ago now, and it was National Geographic or or, or one one of these these similarly anti-Christ stations. And people go, oh, I'm subscribed to that. <laughs> I'm just saying these are people that will come on and tell you that the Earth is 13.8 yeah. billion years old. That's anti-Christ. Yeah. Well, I, I used to I, I used to really like um, I, I love whales. I'm a nation, I was a Welsh woman, but I was just whale, blue whales and all that kind of stuff. I used to watch the one with David Attenborough, the, the, the Blue Planet. Yeah. But here we go, and th this was originally a frog, and this was a... This yeah. was a I, was, I, just, I just turned the sound off and put some praise music on and just sat and watched them. Beautiful. That's the way to do it. That's good advice. Yeah. That's good advice to anyone watching. Turn the sound down. Like, listen to the light. Yeah. The pictures are awesome. Yeah. The pictures are celebrating what, 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 what God created. You know, and I, I, I equally, I love all those things. But when they come on and, and tell you that it was, it, it just happened this many millions of years ago and all that old junk, it's, it don't even start me off on that. And I was watching one of these shows where they were trying to debunk uh, biblical miracles. And they were on there saying that, um, I, I remember, I, was, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. And they said, the first one we're going to deal with is the burning bush. Oh, okay, burning bush. And apparently, out there in Arabia land, there are these these bushes that have a have a sap that's flammable. And every now and again, because it's so hot out there, they just burst into flames. Well, that's and start talking to people. <laughs> yeah, and don't 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 get engulfed with the flames. That's that doesn't. You haven't just explained yeah. away a, a Bible miracle. You've just told me about a bush that yeah. occasionally catches on fire. And they said that the, um, the, the Nile turning into blood, 
that was just a, a very rare type of algae that occasionally appears. It just happened to occasionally appear right after <laughs> Moses had said what he'd said. Yeah. You know, it was, it, it was shocking. And then they said, the, the, the last one that got me was the, the, the Red Sea. They said the Red Sea probably, because of the translation, probably wasn't the Red Sea, it was a tribute, tribute tri it was a smaller river off the side. <laughs> It was a smaller river off the side. At that time of year, it was very shallow, so they walked across. That's not what the Bible says. It was, the like Bible a, it was that shallow. How did it drown the entire Egyptian army? Exactly. Were, they, were, they, were the Egyptian army very small yeah. on that particular day? You know, it was a strange it was phenomenon. To drown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they had very oh. uh, absorbent clothing that just sucked up the water and dragged them down. Yeah. It's what the Bible says. Yeah. We go by what the Bible says. If the Bible says it's so, it's so. Mm. And the Bible says that Jesus was born of a virgin. Yeah. Simple as that. And that's what we believe. And it's, yeah. it's, it's foundational to the Christmas story. Mm. Absolutely foundational to the Christmas story because without Jesus being born of a virgin, he wouldn't have been son of man, son of God. He wouldn't have been the perfect sacrifice. He wouldn't have been the sinless lamb. He wouldn't have been the person we needed to get the job done. Definitely. That attack on the virgin birth is an attack on the uniqueness of Jesus. That's what it is. Yep. He's just another fella. He's not just another guy. He's not the same as anyone else has ever lived. He is the, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. He's faithful and true. He's the Word become flesh. Amen. You know, and people need to realize that. They need to realize who he is. And it, it, who he is, you know, you'd expect someone as unique as Jesus to have a unique birth <laughs> narrative. Yeah. You know, wouldn't, you'd expect it to be the same as everyone else's birth narrative. Yeah. And it's just so powerful. And, yeah. Wonderful. Amen, yeah. And again, you know, this comes back to us honouring the word. I think also at this, 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 um, this time when we celebrate the birth of Jesus together. And again, I've had so many secular people say, oh yes, but Jesus, you know, he wasn't born in December. He was born in, in June or, the, you know, they always, you know, it's, it's a load of old rubbish. It's like, look, yes, we hijacked a pagan festival yeah. to get your eyes off celebrating lights in trees to actually understanding who the, the creator of everything actually was. Because it, it, it comes from celebrating the, or, or, or praying to, it was an old pagan ritual, as I've read, mm. um, where they were, they, were, they were trying to please the, the gods to bring the, 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 uh, the, the new season back after winter. Yeah. So that they, they're saying, look, don't worry about a thing. The season's coming back mm. because it's been put in place by God, let me tell you about him. Let's celebrate his birth. You know, Christmas time is a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And I think it's absolutely right that as human beings, you know, it says that God set the stars and the sun in place for seasons, for times and seasons. It's right that we keep a month. There's some things we should do every month. We should, some things we should do annually. One of the things that we should do annually is set aside some time to remember the fact that the Word has become flesh, that Christ has been born. That's good. You know, and, and, and just to stop and pause and think about it. Yeah, you know, and I think it's really important. And it's, it's, it's become such a commercial thing where I'm not knocking that, you know, buying presents for family. And, you know, what I find is that whole atmosphere makes people quite open. Right. You know, you say, why don't you come to church this week? Why don't you come to church? And I reckon, you know, some of you here, is, you know, a few weeks off Christmas, maybe a church has got a nativity service, maybe it's got a carol service or something. You're probably twice as likely, statistically, to have someone say yes to an invite this time of year. So just a thought for you, just invite someone to church. What's the worst that can happen? They say no. You know, they could come, they could hear the good news about Jesus and they could get saved. You know, it's a thought, just, just invite someone. Amen. Yeah, people are at least, um, yeah, people are open mm. to, to, to receiving because everyone wants a gift at Christmas, right? And you could give someone the best gift ever by giving them the gift of life. Yeah. And that's the importance of it, of getting someone to hear the truth, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, and I, I highly recommend taking, taking anyone you know to a Tree of Life church. Yeah, Amen. Check, check our website and find one near you. We'd love to have you um, over the weekend. I mean, you should be able to check on our website and there should be, um, you know, it should tell you about the Christmas services we're having. And some of them are more social than others. Some of them are more focused on the nativity. Um, I, I like the old cows. I always get Chris and Vaughn to sing, yeah. you know, the cows. We do a cow service. And so each, each church is doing things slightly differently, but at the same time, we're all doing the same thing. We're honouring and exalting and remembering Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same as taking communion. It's a time to remember, and and that's what we that, that that's what we as 
believers should be doing is remembering the victory and every part of it. You know, again, going back to Isaiah, when you read through it, every stage of the, the let's call it the victory life of Jesus, is, is documented before it happened. Yeah. The fact that he fulfilled it adds, adds the power to it as well. You know, this isn't a, a wishy-washy... Again, I'm not knocking the nativities. I love them. Love got used to, you know, my, my daughter when she was, um, she was in the nativity, and I think she was... I think she was a donkey. <laughs> I think she was a donkey. She's probably going to go, Dad, I wasn't a donkey. L Lydia, one year, was the star that guided the men, but another year, she was the clumsy angel. <laughs> That's what Erin was. She was the, the whoopsie daisy, daisy angel. angel. That's what it was. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's what it was. They I was played the same part. Yeah, there you go. I sat there and I thought, I have real theological objections to a clumsy angel, <laughs> but that's my little daughter being wonderful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's all beautiful. It's all yeah. awesome. And it, 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 if it, the thing that it is doing, it's, it's getting people to focus on the, the birth of Jesus Christ. And thank God. That, that something is still um, traditionally going on to, to get people to focus on the birth of, of Jesus, our Lord and our Saviour. It's the yeah. most important moment in history, you know, and it, it's something that we should celebrate and remember. And again, like you say, it's an opportunity to invite people to hear the truth and maybe receive that gift that just keeps giving. Um, you know, we, a lot of the time when I was growing up, when you got presents at Christmas, it said batteries not included. You, you, you had the gift, but you had no power. Man, Jesus, Jesus gives you the power. Gives you the power. You get the power of, of, of the name of Jesus to be able to declare that name over every situation, even cooking the turkey. In the name of Jesus, this Christmas dinner is going to be the best one ever. Amen. Absolutely. <laughs> that sounds almost like an episode of EastEnders, doesn't it? It's going to be the best Christmas in Walford ever. <laughs> By the way, in fact, what we're going to do, we're going to wrap this program up right now, but I'm just going to pray and then I'm going to ask Richard to pray. But we're going to believe that this Christmas would be peaceful. There'd be no family drama. There'd be no soap opera stuff. But there would be a chance and opportunity for you and your family to really experience the grace of Jesus. Father, I thank you for Christmas. I thank you that the, the light entered the world. And I thank you that he's here with us right now. And I pray for everyone listening to the sound of my voice that they would have an awesome Christmas and know you better. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, we've got about 30 seconds left, Richard, if you want to say a final thought or prayer, final prayer. Well, my final thought and final prayer is repeating what I'm saying. Tell them about Jesus. And if there's, yeah. if there's, if there's an issue with telling people about Jesus, you know, I know I've got a normal, normal family, uh, you know, secular people. Show them Jesus. Absolutely. Show them love. Right. Fantastic. Have a great week, everyone. Awesome things are going to happen to you. Amen. We'll Amen. see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>